Hi everybody! So a couple months ago I posted on my personal social media just asking what videos my um, friends and family wanted to see and the number one request I got was for just a basic how to do makeup for people who don't really know how to do makeup. So I'm going to try to show you just a really simple look. This is how I do my makeup for... Um, I don't always wear makeup to school being a teacher, but when I do, this is how I, how I like to do my makeup. Um, definitely if it's parent-teacher conferences or a special day at school, this is how I would do it. Um, or just a casual day out look, this is how I would do it. Some of you asked about drugstore makeup. Um, I have some drugstore products, but my skin, I know I've talked about this, and I'll do a whole future vlog on um, my experiences with adult acne and what has helped and what hasn't. But my skin is just so sensitive, I find it definitely to be a worthwhile investment to um, invest in a little bit nicer makeup that's meant for sensitive skin. But I'll let you know where I got um, all the products that I'm using, and um, I'll also show you some things not to do. And these are obviously really exaggerated, um, partly just to make them show up on the video better, but and partly just for the humor of it all. But these are, um, obviously not to the extreme, but these are some common mistakes that people make when they're first learning how to do makeup. So I hope you get a laugh out of it, but I also hope it helps you see the right way to do things versus the wrong way. Makeup is an art, and with this video you can absolutely modify things. You can figure out um, what works for your own face versus what works for mine as I'm doing my makeup. But there are absolutely some things that are correct and some things that aren't. So it's kind of finding that balancing act between what works for you as an artist and as an individual versus what just doesn't look right. But yeah, I hope you find this helpful. So I'm going to start with my base and I'm going to use a little bit of primer. This is by Sabella. And I'm just doing a pump and a half. You can see it's clear. I don't know how well it should up in the camera. Oops. But I'm just going to apply it just right over my entire face. This just really helps set your makeup, um, keeps it from creasing in certain areas or um, settling in like fine lines or scars, things that you don't want to accentuate. It just really gives it a smooth finish. And it, when it goes on, it shouldn't feel greasy. It should feel smooth, almost velvety, but you don't want to rub it all the way in either. And then I'm going to use Superstay by Maybelline Concealer and Corrector. I don't know how well the camera picks this up, but it actually has kind of a peachy tone to it. I think the camera makes it look a little bit more yellow. But the peachy tone, it's in the lighter color, is going to just really contrast that dark bluish gray of the circles under your eyes. And I'm going to do it in a wedge pattern. It just helps it blend out a little bit more. I have allergies and just genetics that lead to really dark rings under my eyes. I'm going to use my ring finger because that's the weakest finger and that's the one that will keep you from tearing up the muscles under your eyes or tearing up the delicate skin. And doing it in a padding upward motion can help increase the circulation and reduce the, the appearance of those dark circles. Got that all blended out. What you don't want to do with under eye concealer is just take it and make a ring right under your eye like this. And then try to blend it out. Yeah, see, now you just have a white ring instead of a black ring. I know you don't want to look like a raccoon, but you also don't want to look like a wombat. And then I'm going to use True Blend, and um, this is also from just CVS or Target, wherever you could buy drugstore makeup. I'm going to put that over any trouble areas. You can see it's like a crayon, you just can emulsify it with your finger a little bit. So if you can color with a crayon, you can handle this, no problem. So I don't put it over every single dark spot on my face, but... I do like to put it over the most prominent trouble areas. My skin is really not liking the humidity and the sweating and then going into air conditioning that has sucked all the moisture out of the air. So 
So one form of foundation you can use to just get that smooth base is liquid foundation. This is by Neutrogena. And with liquid foundation, you can choose um, anti-aging or you can choose one with SPF. Um, I have dry skin, so I use one for dry skin. Some people use one for oily skin but um, or a combination of those. But with foundation that is liquid, you can just get a little bit on your finger and just kind of start at your nose and work your way out. Just dab it on. Make sure to get the area around your eyes. And I know it looks really light, the um, camera light is picking up on the shininess of it. I promise it's actually pretty close to my skin tone. And I'm just going to blend it out. You can do this with a sponge too if you wanted to. Yeah, wow, that looks light on camera. Checking my reflection in the mirror, yeah. It's like night and day looking in the mirror versus the camera. So that's liquid foundation. And the other type of foundation that I prefer is mineral powder foundation. I find it's a little bit more forgiving with matching your skin tone, but um, I just love that it goes on light. And again, for sensitive skin or skin that's prone to breakouts, mineral foundation is a lot more, a lot more gentle. But just taking my big fluffy brush, just applying it right to my face. And if it's got decent coverage, it should at least partially cover up or work with your concealer to cover up any scars or blemishes. But I usually don't find that foundation by itself is enough to cover up really dark blemishes. But again, this is just um, helping set the rest of your makeup, giving it all that smooth, finished look. And if a little bit gets on your eyelashes, that's okay. It will actually make your eyelashes look fuller when you put the mascara on. With foundation, don't do this, okay? If you find that your summer tan has faded and you don't have lighter foundation, just skip it because this doesn't make you look tan. This just looks ridiculous. And don't do this either. With this, people are either going to start shoving you into the sunlight to see if you sparkle, or they're going to be watching to see if Aslan is going to come bite your face off. And the last part of my base is just going to be some translucent powder. Um, again, this is Neutrogena, great if you need a drugstore brand. And it comes with a little powder puff right inside of it. I'm just going to put that on and use downward strokes to apply it to my face. If you go upward, the microscopic hairs that everybody has on their face will end up standing up and collecting powder, and then you get this chalky look, which isn't what you want. And again, it gets on your eyelashes, that's okay. Just don't get it in your actual eyes. And this is, like I said, a translucent powder. It goes over your foundation to help set your makeup. Um, if you don't want to do full makeup one day, but you don't want your skin to get shiny from being oily, you can apply the powder on. But powder and foundation serve two separate purposes. If you try to substitute one for the other, it's not going to work. So for my eyes to start, I'm going to start with, ooh, this can be really hard for the camera to pick up, but this looks bright yellow, um, what I'm seeing on the camera, but it is actually flesh toned. It is bone by Artistry. And I'm just using an Artistry eye contour brush. And I'm going to apply it from my lash line all the way up to my eyebrow. You can also use a light pink or a darker brown, whatever matches your skin tone. And this is just a neutral color, again, just to help set things, keep things a little bit more even. Um, if you're like me and you tend to get the purpley veins around your eyelids, it can blend those out a little bit. I find it really helps prevent my eyeshadow from creasing into my eyelid. And then I'm just going to take some brown. This is a palette. I also use this light pink for the neutral tone sometimes, but um, I can use my eye contour brush. And this palette is by Artistry again. And I'm just going to make a little dot 
in the outer corner of my eye. I'm gonna make one in the inner corner. I don't know if you can see the difference in the contouring that that creates. The same thing out here. And then I'm gonna take my big fluffy brush, my foundation brush, just blend it a little bit. What you don't want to do is use super pigmented eyeshadows when you're going for a natural look. Unless it's a 1970s spirit day, then go for it. For my eyebrows, this is um, ColorCon by Wet n Wild. I think it was like $3 at CVS. Um, and I'm just going to take a little bit and just very lightly run it over my eyebrows. I can barely even feel it. And you can see I'm not filling them in, I'm not changing their shape, I'm just giving them a little bit of definition. If you have leave your brows natural, you don't shape them, or if you um, have really thick, dark brows and you feel like skipping this step, that's perfectly fine. I just find that um, when I have a whole face of makeup on, they tend to blend out a little bit just with the powder foundation that gets in them, so I like to give them a little definition. Your eyebrows, what you don't want to do is take a super dark color and completely fill in your eyebrows and try to exaggerate their shape. Yeah, no, don't do that. For my eyeliner, I'm using an Artistry Eye Pencil. It comes with, um, you purchase this plastic outer part with the smudger on the end, and then you can just buy fillers. But this one is dark brown. And I'm gonna start in the inner corner of my eye and kind of work my way out and make it just a little bit thicker as I move out. Very, very subtle. I'm not gonna wing it or anything, but I'm doing it right along my lash line. Take the smudger. And then for my waterline, I'm just going to do the middle to the outer corner. And if this hurts your eyes or if the eyeliner gets in your eyes, um, might not hurt to invest in a nicer eyeliner. Cheap eyeliners will do that. But if your eyes are just that sensitive, you can skip it too. But I think you can see the difference in definition between my eyes. Same thing. And this takes practice, being able to get that little fine line. I still mess it up sometimes. All right, so that just gives my eyes a little bit more definition. With eyeliner, what you don't want to do is have that big gap between your lashes and your eyeliner line. You're not a zebra. And don't make the big thick line all the way underneath your eyes. Eyelashes, if you want to curl your lashes, you can. This is just a little curler from, I think it was from Shopgo or from Target. But you can just put it right up against the roots of your lashes. Don't catch your skin, but just right at the end. Squeeze, move up a little bit, squeeze some more. Move all the way to the tips. I don't know how well the camera catches this, but I just think it really helps open up my eyes a little bit. Again, if this is really uncomfortable for you, you can just skip it. I just like the way it looks. So for my mascara, I'm using Sabella uh, Defining Waterproof Mascara. Um, normally, I don't recommend using waterproof every day if you're going to get worried about getting caught in the rain or if you're just having a bad allergy day or something. Um, that's Then waterproof mascara is great, but wearing it every day can be really hard on your eyelashes and the skin around your eyes. But it shows up a lot better on camera. So I'm just going to take a little bit and just go at the root of my eyelashes up to my eyes. You know, so I'm kind of shimmering the brush a little bit. 
Just fly fan out your lashes. So I think you can see the difference that that makes. If you want fuller lashes, if you get a little bit on the tips, that helps too. And I'm just gonna do a really light swipe on the bottom. I barely even feel it, just because I think that super dark on top and then really pale lashes at the bottom looks a little bit too unnatural. There's all kinds of ways to apply mascara depending on the look you want. I'll do some more videos on that in the future. All right, so there's your eyes, you're all done. With mascara, don't apply it so thick that it looks like you have spiders coming out of your eyes. False eyelashes are okay, spiders are not okay. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of contouring, but I wanna add a little color to my cheeks. So I'm gonna use Sabella blush. This is Sunset. And I'm gonna use the blush brush, which is a little bit smaller than the foundation brush. I'm just gonna apply a little bit, and then when you smile, see the fullest parts of your cheeks? Those are the apples of your cheeks. That's where you want blush to go. And then Sabella Bronzer. Use a slightly smaller brush. This just came in um, one of the eyeshadow kits that I bought, but I use it for bronzer. But I'm just gonna take a little bit and just go right underneath the blush. Just add some definition to your cheekbones, gives a little more sun-kissed look. And then you can blend it with your fingers, that's perfectly acceptable. Or if you wanna make sure it really blends evenly, just use your foundation brush again. Make sure you do kind of alternate sides a little bit though, so you don't pick it all up and then put it all on the other side of your face. With blush, you don't want to apply it too heavy, and you also don't want to go past the middle of your eye or past your temple. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. With bronzer, apply a reasonable amount and make sure it blends. This looks like Neapolitan ice cream on my face. And then for my lips, you can see I have naturally pretty dark lips. These are just my natural lips right here with no color or anything. So a lot of women going for a natural look might use a lighter uh, pink lipstick, but since mine are naturally dark, I use a little bit darker shade. This is Bon Bon by Artistry. It's a nice neutral pink. And you can either just dab it on gently, or you can use the brush in the lip, in the uh, brush set for lips and just kind of dip it in and apply it to your lips. And I'm just doing the natural shape of my lips here. I'm not trying to change anything at all. Still a little darker than I like, but. And then for lip gloss, this is just a cheap lip gloss from Victoria's Secret. Somebody gave it to me as um, a gift a while ago. And I'm just gonna take a little bit. Just kind of make a heart shape. Go my lips. And that just really fills out your lips a little bit. If you like the way it looks better, if you spread it over your entire lips, the lip gloss, then you can do that too. But I just like a little pop. With lips, stay away from unnatural looking colors. And on top of that, don't take your lipstick and just slather it on like a crayon. Yeah, I know, it looks terrifying. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do, um, this is again optional, but I really like to just do this to seal my makeup on. This is just some witch hazel from, um, I think it was the Target Pharmacy that I put in a spray bottle. And I'm just going to really lightly mist it onto my face. You don't wanna saturate your face because that will take the makeup off, obviously, but just a little light mist will really seal it on. And once I do this, it looks shiny right now, but it will dry, I promise. Um, when I do this, I find that my makeup can withstand 
almost anything. It doesn't wear off. Um, a little bit of water won't hurt it. Uh, it stays on until I want to take it off. And it also comes off really easy with soap. So that's why I like to use witch hazel to seal my makeup in place. So yeah, that basically completes the way to do your makeup if you're going for a natural look. Okay, so that took about 30 minutes to get off my face and I don't think I quite got it. Ugh. But I hope you found that a little bit entertaining and hopefully very helpful. If you have questions or suggestions for future videos, please, as always, um, make a comment, just let me know or message me and subscribe, like, all that. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.